Like most farmers, Derek Jenkins of Shoal Lake, Manitoba gets pretty busy at certain times of the year. His crop rotation includes wheat, barley and canola, which means he hauls a fair bit of grain. Eventually, Jenkins decided it was time to build his own self-propelled auger. I just got a little tired of having to manhandle these uh, conventional augers around, and uh, so I, uh, it was either buy a, a uh, ready-made kit or uh, design something myself. For the auger itself, Jenkins chose a Westfield, which is 41 feet long and 8 inches in diameter. He had to modify it in order to run it as a self-propelled unit. It was originally a power takeoff drive auger, but I, I purchased it new and then took that drive off and then uh, built the, uh, the uh, drive off the engine I put on it. He chose to drive the auger with a 25 horsepower Kohler engine and then equipped it with an electric clutch for a safe and convenient way to engage and disengage the flighting. The electric clutch has a remote switch with a magnet on it so you can stick it on beside the door of the bin you're emptying and uh, control the auger from there instead of uh, any mechanical clutch or having to uh, go right up to the auger. Since he already had a 1993 Chev four-wheel drive truck with a blow-on transmission, Jenkins decided to salvage its front end to drive his self-propelled auger. The front differential because it's got an electric uh, engage on it to, uh, in, when it was a 4x4, four four, can also be used to uh, you turn the switch off and it, it freewheels if you're towing this auger. So when you start it up and the, everything engages, then it, uh, it drives just like a, a truck differential. And then I, I put a sprocket on the uh, input uh, shaft of the differential and I drive it with a chain from an orbit motor. Since the original auger axle was about seven feet wide, Jenkins extended the truck axle accordingly. He found the design of the axle was quite well suited for this type of modification. This particular thing works quite well where, where I could just cut the one uh, shaft, weld a piece of heavy tubing over it and I widened it by two feet. Mounting the truck axle on the auger was pretty straightforward, but Jenkins made sure to use fairly heavy materials for long-term durability. Eliminated uh, the steering components and just mounted the wheel hubs into a steel plate and made the, uh, the frame out of uh, steel tube and angle iron. And then uh, when I widened the, the axles, then uh, everything's mounted in kind of a rigid uh, subframe, and then that's... Uh, that's what's attached to the uh, existing auger frame. He added a reservoir which holds about 10 gallons to make sure he has plenty of oil capacity for running his self-propelled auger. And I, I plumbed that into the system and then I've, most of my parts I got from Princess Auto, uh, most of the hydraulic components, uh, the pump and the, the valves, the orbit motor and, and the tank. And I insulated this tank so that in the winter the, the oil would uh, warm up uh, quicker. The steering wheel was salvaged off another old truck, but Jenkins had to go through some trial and error to come up with an effective steering system. The front steering wheels are uh, turned by a, a double chain reduction from the bottom of the steering wheel shaft. When I first built it, I just had a single uh, three to one and it, it was too, uh, too hard to move the steering wheel. So I just, uh, just put a jack shaft in the middle and uh, an extra three to one sprocket reduction and it, uh, it works really well now. The top end of the auger is raised and lowered by electric winch. He considered multiple options for raising and lowering the intake end of the auger, but eventually he figured out the most practical method. I tried several different uh, positions for, uh, for a hydraulic cylinder, but I was never able to get enough uh, lift out of a direct uh, connection, so I I had to go to a scissor lift to here, which is sort of like a, a truck hoist in miniature, and uh, it gives me enough range to uh, raise the auger high enough. Since Jenkins built this self-propelled auger from the ground up, he was able to equip it with all the convenient features he wanted, including a gearbox reverser for running the auger flighting. Well, it's just got the shift lever. You can switch it to reverse uh, to clean out the auger 
if you're uh, changing uh, grains and so you don't have to slacken a belt and, and reverse the belt you just flick a, flick a lever and uh, it reverses so that's uh, it's a very very nice feature to have as you may have noticed earlier the driver's seat goes up and down when Jenkins raises and lowers the intake end of the auger but he's pretty sure he can correct this problem on his next project a larger 12 inch self-propelled auger the new one I would make a rigid frame because I, I used a big chunk of the auger frame uh, on this one I think I would uh, eliminate that entirely and just make a subframe with the axle the drive axle and the steering wheels on one frame and then uh, instead of kind of hinging the frame in the middle like I did with this one. Jenkins designed this self-propelled auger in such a way that he has excellent visibility when approaching a bin. He estimates the total cost of materials for the project at just under $5,000 not including the drive axle which he already had on hand.